Hi, it's Carolyn here. Before you start listening to this episode, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently in Switzerland doing my very own and long overdue trip around the country. I'm visiting some of the most popular destinations in Switzerland, as well as a number of lesser known places. And I'm traveling around by both car and train. If you'd like to follow along with my Swiss travels to see where I am and what I'm doing, make sure you follow Holidays to Switzerland on Instagram. That's Holidays number two Switzerland. Here I'll be sharing photos and reels as I go, and I'd love you to follow along. Now, settle back and enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Your host is the founder of Holidays to Switzerland.com and the Switzerland Travel Planning Facebook group, Carolyn Schonefinger. On this podcast, Carolyn will be joined by a variety of guests who share their knowledge and love of the country to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. Welcome to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. This is episode 38. Today, I'm joined by a regular guest on the show, Andy Neff from the Swiss Travel System. Andy is passionate about the Swiss Public Transport Network, and although we've discussed it in previous episodes, with a new year upon us, I thought it was timely to get an update on the Swiss Travel System and the Swiss Travel Pass. In addition to that, Andy is going to tell us about Switzerland's dedication to offering a sustainable public transport network. It's something the Swiss take very seriously. And you might be surprised by some of the eco-friendly power sources that are used. But before I welcome Andy, I'd like to say thank you to the sponsors of the podcast, Switzerland Tourism. Make sure you visit their website at myswitzerland.com for endless ideas and tips to help with your Swiss vacation planning. Okay, so are you ready to hear all about travelling by train, bus and boat in Switzerland? If you need a ticket to the great outdoors... You need Switzerland. So let's welcome Andy to tell us all about it. Hello, Andy. Thank you for coming on the show again. Hello. Good morning. Now, you've been a regular guest on the podcast, but for those people who are tuning in for the first time, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your role at the Swiss Travel System, please? Yes, with pleasure. Well, um, myself, I'm Andy, and uh, I have been working for the Swiss Travel System for eight years now with this company, but I have been with the railways for more than 28 years, so um, I'm really the train guy. (laughs) And uh, my role with um, Swiss Travel System is that I'm the market manager for the overseas market, and that includes Australia, of course. Wonderful. So you know a fair bit about trains. Yeah, well, they they say so, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's good. Now, we have chatted about the Swiss travel system on previous episodes of the podcast, but it would be great if you could give us a bit of a refresher on the public transport network and why it is so good. Well, yes, um, keeping in mind the dimensions of Switzerland with just about 41,000 square kilometers, um, just remember Australia has more than 7.7 million square kilometers. <laughs> uh, and well, the measures of Switzerland from west to east are just 350 kilometers and from north to south 220. But we are having more than 30,000 kilometers of rail, road, and waterways. And um, that's quite an impressive figure, I'd say. Absolutely. And um, so the public transport network is extremely dense. And that's the reason why more than 6.6 million people are traveling by train, bus, or boat every day. And that's out of um, out of the population of 8.6 million. Mm. So you see, almost every person is traveling on a daily basis by public transport, and that makes uh, an average Swiss citizen uh, travel about 2,500 kilometers per year. That's a great effort, and I think you mentioned uh, in one of our previous episodes that. 
there's kind of a, a general rule that wherever you want to go in Switzerland, you should be able to reach there by public transport. Is, is that right? Uh, well, uh, th- I think there is not a rule, but um, it is actually possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I was living without a car for, let's say, about 40 years of my life. And um, we just bought a car like five years ago. And it's absolutely possible. Mm. Of course, you can't live somewhere up in the mountains in a very remote valley. But if you live, live in, the, in the cities or the, the suburbs, um, yeah, you can technically get almost everywhere by public transport. Yeah, okay. And the, the network you mentioned includes trains and buses and boats. And it's all like the timetables are just all sort of set to a streamline so smoothly together, aren't they? Yes, it's correct. Uh, in Switzerland, we have a thing called the regular interval timetable that was introduced um, almost 40 years ago. And uh, in fact, it means there is a train every hour on each line in each direction. Mm-hmm. And that's just uh, the minimal service. So um, when a train is leaving from Zurich Airport to Geneva at 8.18, uh, the next one would be at 9.18 and at 10.18, etc. And that applies for trains and um, and buses and the city transportation and, uh, well, not for the boats. They are not running that frequently most of the time. But, yeah, that's a regular interval timetable. Mm. Yeah, wonderful. So wherever uh, you want to go and, and whichever means of transport you need to connect to, there, there'll be something there. You won't have to wait too long for the next connection. Absolutely. And in case you miss a connection, um, which doesn't happen that often, um, you will have the next train, let's say, 30 minutes or latest one hour later. Uh, mm. That's how it works. Yeah, Very It's good. all synchronized. It's all running like clockwork. And um, it's a process of about 30 years to get the actual timetable. So yeah. um, now the, the experts are working on the, let's say, 2050 timetable, something like wow, that. Wow, that's amazing. So we're benefiting today from the work that they did 30 years ago planning planning these timetables. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, just one other question for you while we're talking about the Swiss travel system. A question that I get asked frequently is, do you need to book tickets for the trains in Switzerland? Yeah, that's a very important question. And um, we are kind of an exception, especially in Europe. In most of our neighboring countries, um, you have to book seats, especially on the long distance trains, not in Switzerland. Since we have trains on the main lines like every 30 minutes, it's not necessary to make a seat reservation. And uh, we have very high capacities. That's another reason why. So try to avoid rush hour and you are just fine. Wonderful. Now, while we're speaking uh, about tickets, I'd like to chat about the Swiss Travel Pass, which we have also covered uh, in another episode. But for those listeners who aren't familiar with the Swiss Travel Pass, can you explain more about it and also perhaps tell us what is new for 2022 and and what, what might have changed from previous years? Yeah, well, to keep it very simple, the Swiss Travel Pass is the all-in-one ticket for Switzerland for the Swiss public transport. So with one ticket, you have access to almost all public transport. There are a few exceptions, but these are normally minor connections. Uh, More than 250 transportation companies are covered with the Swiss Travel Pass here in Switzerland. So um, basically, you do like the hop on and hop off thing you normally do for city tours, right? Mm -hmm. But you can do it um, in the whole country with various means of transports and on many public transport companies. Mm, Okay. And so what sort of choices do people have when it comes to the Swiss Travel Pass? Is it available in for different durations? Yes, um, you have a choice um, between 3, 4, 6, 8 or 15 days. Mm -hmm. And you have the choice between a consecutive pass or a flex pass. Mm -hmm. And of course, in Switzerland, we provide first and second class. First class is more comfortable 
Um, you have more leg room. It's normally quieter. Uh, it's not that crowded. Um, but don't expect any special services on first class like on an airplane. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, that's the choices you have. So you can choose between classes, but also between durations of the pass. Okay. And there's a few um, additional benefits as well, isn't there, aside from the actual transport itself? What else do we get included with the Swiss Travel Pass? Yeah, there is a reason why we are not calling it the Swiss Rail Pass. Um, we call it the Swiss Travel Pass because there are also more than 500 museums included. Um, that's a huge variety of museums. There are some of the top museums are, are part of it. Um, let's call it uh, art museums with uh, the world famous um, painters, for example. Um, but you also have a lot of historic buildings which are considered to be museums. Um, you can visit the Swiss Museum of Transport at half price, for example, which is one of the most visited museums. You can um, visit the Matterhorn Museum in Zermatt, which is a very small, cozy, nice local museum. You can visit the Red Cross Museum in Geneva, the Olympic Museum in Lausanne, um, or even the Glacier Garden in Luzern, which is more or less an outdoor park. Mm -hmm. So... The Swiss museums are not just uh, the boring and dusty stuff. Um, <laughs> they are very interactive. And the good thing is you, quite, yeah, you save quite a lot of money um, with the Swiss travel pass, getting free entrance to those museums. Okay. But on top of the museums, you get also access to the mountain top excursions. Some of them are free of charge. At the moment, it's five. And um, to most others, you get up to 50% reduction. And again, that's quite a saving. You can mm -hmm. easily get lunch on top of the mountain in the restaurant with the money you saved for getting up there. Yeah. And, um, well, I think your listeners know uh, that there are quite a number of mountain peaks in Switzerland you can get access to. For sure, yeah, and some of the the really um, well, so there's some great ones that are included for free, which is fantastic. And what about if people are travelling with their children and mum and dad are, have bought the the Swiss Travel Pass? Do they have to pay for their uh, children that are c coming along with them? No, although we know that Switzerland is not a cheap country, it's quite expensive to live here to travel here. But children up to the age of 16 travel free of charge with their parents. And I'd say that's, that's a nice benefit yeah, and makes yeah. traveling, uh, well, it makes at least holidays in Switzerland a little bit more affordable. Mm. Yeah, excellent. Now, there have been a few changes to the Swiss Travel Pass for 2022. So could you tell us um, what they are, please? Yeah, with pleasure, because it's very good news. Uh, you wouldn't believe, but we have dropped the prices for 2022. I think this is the first time in history of Swiss travel system that the prices of the Swiss travel pass are lower than last mm -hmm. year. Um, it's not for all the passes. It's not for the whole, how to say, for the whole uh, product range. But the eight-day pass and the 15-day pass, um, well, are quite a quite cheaper. For example, mm -hmm. um, I think the 15-day pass is about 15% cheaper than last year. And, um, well, that's a nice number. And um, as I mentioned before, we have 3, 4, 6, 8, and 15 days, and the 6-day pass has only been um, introduced this year. Okay. So, yeah, that if people don't quite want the whole 8-day pass, there's there's a 6-day one that, um, that might might suit. Yes, exactly. That comes in pretty handy. And uh, there is another minor change. Uh, there has been an adaption of the age limit for the youth pass. Uh, it used to be 26 years, mm -hmm. um, up to 26 years available, but now it's only 25. So okay. it has been changed to the international standard. Okay. Well, I'm sure um, anyone who's planning to visit this year and thinking about buying their Swiss Travel Pass, they'll be very happy to know that some of the prices have, have been reduced, which is excellent news. Absolutely. 
Now, lots of visitors that come to Switzerland arrive from neighbouring countries uh, and we possibly automatically think that they would have to fly into Switzerland, but they can actually travel by train. So can you tell us about some of the rail services that are available from the neighbouring countries? Yes, um, remember that Switzerland is in the heart of Western Europe and uh, we are surrounded by actually five neighboring countries. There are four which are very well known, uh, that's um, France, Germany, Austria and Italy. And the fifth is the Principality of Liechtenstein, which is a very small country. And uh, as you said, um, first thought most of the time is flying into Switzerland from the neighboring country but in many cases this is not the fastest and not the most comfortable way to get into Switzerland. Um, Best example are the high-speed connections from Paris to Switzerland. You take the train from the Paris Lyon station and uh, four hours later, you arrive to Zurich main station. And in fact, that's faster than flying. Mm-hmm. Because um, you are leaving from the city center and you arrive right into the city center. Uh, you don't have to do a check in procedure like you do for the flight at the airport. Um, well, since the railway station is in the center of town, mm-hmm. no need to transfer to the railway station so that means um, you get there like two three minutes before departure and you take your luggage with you and um, that's that's a good thing yes yeah. um, they Much more convenient. once yeah they once made the competition one person was traveling from Zurich city center to Paris by plane and the other by train guess what the one by train was faster mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. And um, there are various other cities connected to Paris by high-speed TGV train. It takes three hours from Paris, uh, from Basel, Geneva and Lausanne to Paris. And um, for example, there are like six connections per day to Zurich, eight connections um, from Geneva to Paris. So Mm. it's very easy to combine France with Switzerland. Yeah. And again, really regular services, which is great. Yes, and very comfortable seating and comfortable traveling, yes. Good. And what about from, say, Germany? Germany, yes. Um, There's another high-speed train coming from Germany into Switzerland, though... um, as a matter of fact, as soon as these high-speed trains enter Switzerland, they're not that high-speed anymore. <laughs> there are just too many obstacles in Switzerland. Um, but the ICE, the Intercity Express train, is connecting various German cities with Switzerland. Uh, for example, Berlin and Hamburg um, with the high-speed train. Um, takes eight hours from Hamburg to Zurich, for example, or 10 hours from Berlin to Interlaken Ost. But it's Mm. a direct high-speed train, um, very comfortable seating, and uh, it's a very nice alternative to the flight. There are also various Eurocity connections. So this is a a slower train category between Köln, Stuttgart, and Munich. And especially Munich, the connection has become much faster this year. It used to be um, a train line without electricity. So there were diesel engines pulling the trains um, on the German territory. But now it has been electrified, as we call it. So now there are the newer um, international train sets can travel straight from Zurich all the way to Munich and that reduces traveling time from four hours to three hours and 30 minutes. Hmm. So, um, yeah, that's okay. another and what about, option. Mm, and what about for uh, visitors coming from Italy? Um, there's one thing I forgot to mention, sorry, and uh, mm-hmm. that's the overnight trains. Okay. Because I'm personally a big fan of overnight trains. The overnight trains almost disappeared in the 
past few years. Um, how to say the competition by low-cost carriers was just um, too high. Mm. I mean, you could fly for, let's call it, um, $29 to, um, to Paris or to Amsterdam or, or whatever. And um, so it was just too cheap. But now many more people, um, sustainability is a very important um, thing nowadays. And um, we kind of see the reincarnation of the overnight train. And um, there are new connections introduced now. But the ones to Hamburg and Berlin from Zurich, um, they have been in place for quite a while already. Okay. So uh, you enter the night train in the evening, you leave Zurich in the evening, and the next morning you arrive to Hamburg. You had a comfortable night's sleep, and um, you save on accommodation costs mm. in the same and way. Do they all have uh, sleeper compartments, or are some of them just regular train seats? Now, the good thing is you can choose, actually, what kind of category you would like to have and uh, how much you want to spend mm -hmm. on your trip by night. On most trains, you can start with a simple seat, um, though I'd rather spend a little bit more and can, and being able, for being able to lie down mm -hmm. for sleeping. Uh, you can, next uh, level would be like a couchette, as we call it, that's for up to six people in a compartment or you can even have a sleeper compartment for yourself two or four people sharing okay hmm. great and uh, the sleeper um, that, that that's a that's a real bed right it's not just a bunk um mm -hmm. the that's more like bunk uh, bunk sleeping but in the sleeper compartment you have you have a real bed okay so you have the choice yes Okay, so what were the connections uh, from Italy? From Italy, um, we have um, quite a few trains going to Italy. Uh, there is um, connections like every two hours from Zurich to Milan. Milan is kind of the hub for Italy, arriving from Switzerland. Um, you have trains from the western part of Switzerland, from Geneva, Lausanne, but also from Basel and Zurich going into Milan. And then from Milan, you have connections to all other major cities in Switzerland. And um, those trains between Zurich and Milan are running on a regular base. And they are all crossing the Alps, of course. And that's kind of a natu natural barrier. Mm -hmm. um, but a few years ago, a very long tunnel has been opened um, crossing the Alps or going under the Alps. Um, that's the Gotthard Base Tunnel with 57 kilometers of length. And uh, thanks to this tunnel, traveling time has been reduced by, yeah, we can call it hours. <laughs> so you can reach Milan in just about three hours from Zurich. Mm. And, very uh, fast. That's, that's really fast. Yeah. And uh, there is no overnight connections to Italy anymore. Yeah, there used to be in the past, uh, but it has all been cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are high-speed trains in Italy um, making every other major Italian city reachable from Milan in a few hours. Okay. And what about Austria? Obviously, um, it's the, the closer cities, I guess, like Salt, Salzburg and, and Innsbruck, you can reach them quite quickly but what about the f cities that are a bit further away like Vienna yes well um, the good thing is there are direct trains um, there is a train like almost every two hours between Zurich and Vienna and uh, the train is called rail chat mm -hmm. so it's also a rather fast train um, going up to 200 kilometers per hour though again uh, you're traveling through the Alps to Vienna so um, probably cannot reach such kind of high speeds quite often but it's a very comfortable train a very modern train and um, it takes eight hours from Zurich to Vienna and the same train is stopping on the way in famous places like Innsbruck, Salzburg or Linz. Mm -hmm. Okay and that's a daytime and service is it? That's a daytime service and um, here you see another um, advantage between um, taking a train and flying because when you travel by train you have all these sceneries right mm. 
and traveling from Zurich to Vienna, as I mentioned, you're traveling through the Alps. So you have beautiful sceneries along the way. Of course, taking a flight from Zurich to Vienna is faster. Nobody can deny that, but mm. um, you don't have, you miss all those sceneries, right? Yeah. And, you only um, see the clouds. Exactly, and call it traveling by style, taking a train. Yeah, for sure. And, but for the ones who were not very keen on these sceneries, they can take the overnight connections. <laughs> yeah, we have, um, we have a train called the Night Jet connecting Zurich with Vienna. And again, you leave Zurich in the late evening and then you arrive to Vienna in the morning. And um, yeah, for me, traveling on an eye train, that's also kind of traveling in style. Yeah. You have your nightcap before you go to sleep, um, maybe a small bottle of champagne or a bigger one, I don't know. And you get, get uh, rocked to sleep. Yeah, exactly. And then in the morning, after you wake up, you have a breakfast in your compartment, served. So, um yeah, it's uh, it's a nice way to to reach a new city, right? Traveling in style. Yeah, traveling in style. But there is not only um, there is not only Vienna. There is also Graz uh, available by train, and um, this train going to Graz overnight is also connecting to Ljubljana and Zagreb. Oh, really? So um, okay. you can travel as far as Zagreb in Croatia mm-hmm. by night train, and that's a very nice way to travel there. Also, Budapest and Prague are reachable by night train. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I highly recommend to for the ones who are traveling um, between those cities in Europe, try those night trains. It's really yeah. a special kind of experience and uh, sleeping Definitely. on a train. I like it. I like it very much. Yeah, and why not? Now, I think there's also a, another new overnight service from Amsterdam to Zurich that I recently read about. How long does that journey take, and, and is that a daily service? Uh, yes. Um, as I said, um, overnight trains are in fashion again, and the Swiss Railways, in partnership with our neighbouring um, with the railway companies of the neighboring countries are reintroducing night train connections now on a regular base. There will be more coming. And the first one of those is now Amsterdam, Zurich, Amsterdam. And um, you are leaving Zurich um, just about 10 o'clock in the evening. And you reach Amsterdam next morning, 9 o'clock. Yeah. So um, I have to admit that um, this is not pure traveling time. Okay. Yeah. To make it more comfortable for the passengers so that they can sleep a little bit longer, they put the train aside in the middle of the night. Oh, um, okay. So just they are actually kind of making the whole trip a little bit longer to have a, a comfortable, comfortable night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Yes. And not arrive in very early hours of the yeah, morning. Yeah, like six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> but again, this is a very comfortable and modern train. Brand new rolling stock, um, state of the art. And uh, again, you can have your nightcap in the evening and you get your breakfast served in your compartments in the morning. And uh, well, it just started in December mm-hmm. and it's now running on a daily basis. Okay. Well, that's great. So it's interesting that, that you mentioned there that the night trains are becoming more fashionable again and partly I all possibly mainly because of the sustainability uh, issue. So I think one of the things that's interesting is that train travel is known as the most sustainable form of travel and that typically a train ride produces 27 times less CO2 than a comparable car journey. So it's great for the environment as well as the fact that we get that, you know, such a, a comfortable trip. And sustainability, I know, is something that the Swiss take very seriously. Can you give us some examples of sustainable travel in Switzerland? Yeah, well, we are a small country, but uh, trying to get 
to, to make a huge effort in sustainable traveling and uh, the environment is very important for us. That's correct. And since we have such a great public transport network, we really make use of it. And I can give you an example. Um, for example, there is no passenger train in Switzerland running on diesel anymore. So the whole public transport network is electrified. And um, that's one reason why it's so environmentally friendly, hmm, traveling by public transport in Switzerland. And to top it off, it's uh, all hydropower, which is used for these trains. Well, not all, but most of it. There mm -hmm. is still a little bit of nuclear power involved, but there are no coal power plants in Switzerland, for example. Hmm? Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, let's call it the CO2 um, we are, which is produced by um, by these power plants, is really really low. Mm. Yeah, and I guess you've uh, got so much, um, so many lakes in Switzerland that it'd be silly not to take advantage of the hydro power. Yeah, absolutely. There. How to say water, that's one thing we have plenty of in Switzerland, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's uh, We don't have any other natural resources like uh, iron ore or oil or whatever, but we have lots of water. Yeah. Um, water coming down from the mountains, of course, um, uh, mainly from snow in winter, melting in spring and summer, uh, but also rivers which are going through Switzerland are used for producing hydro energy and uh, one good example is the Ration Railway. Uh, that's the railway company operating, operating the Bernina Express. Um, all energy used for the trains is produced by hydro hydropower plants. So mm -hmm. it's really 100% sustainable. Mm. Fantastic. Yes, and, and uh, I mean, here in Switzerland, there are countless artificial lakes in the mountains for producing energy. There are huge dams. Um, but we also have quite a lot of uh, pump storage hydroelectric power plants so that we can break the peaks, right? So during the day, um, when a lot of energy is consumed, um, also through by the industry, of course, um, how to say the water is pumped or the water is used for producing this electricity. And at night, um, when the peak is not that high anymore, they use the, the cheaper electric, um, the cheaper electricity for pumping the water up again into the artificial lake. And that's kind of a huge battery, which mm -hmm. can be used to, uh, to break the peaks, right? Yeah, and uh, there are many other examples in, in Switzerland about uh, an environmentally friendly um, transportation. There is a nice example, for example, Stanzerholm, that's one of the mountain peaks which are included in the Swiss travel pass. Uh, they used solar power for mm -hmm. operating the cable car going up. So they have these huge solar panels on the roof of the station buildings. Hmm? And um, that's a sufficient for operating the cable car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And uh, I could give you some other examples. Yeah, if you please want. do. Please do. <laughs> so I think there's um, quite an interesting bus service near Interlaken. Yes, absolutely. Um, Interlaken is operating an e-post bus. So, uh, um, in, in quite many cities and agglomerations, you already find uh, hybrid buses. You wouldn't believe, but it exists. It's not only the hybrid car; there are also hybrid buses. And uh, but in Interlaken, it's uh, it's running entirely by electricity, and uh, these um, batteries are then recharged by hydropower. Mm -hmm. So. Um, 100 percent yeah green yeah. energy right that's great and what about the um power that's used for the freiburg funi this is something quite unique. yeah that's that's quite unique and actually the system is very old that's how they were operating the very early cable cars so the funi is is a cable car it's a cable car connecting the upper part of Fribourg with the lower part of Fribourg, um, one of the bigger cities in Switzerland. Um, and uh, they still use water. 
um, to operate Not this cable car. Not just any water, is it? Not just any water, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's actually filtered wastewater they are using. So um, they fill a water tank in this cabin in, in of the upper gondola. Hmm? They, they fill a water tank there. And this is then dragging... Um, this this uh, cable car down the cabin down, and then once it is down, up the the, the counterpart has been pulled up, of course, right? Mm-hmm. And um, once the cabin has reached the lower station, the water is is released and is uh, is going back into the sewerage, right? Mm. That's how it works. Amazing. <laughs> And is, yes, is, there really a sm- is there a smell or not? No, of course no. not. <laughs> <laughs> it's Switzerland, of course not. It's all pristine. <laughs> yeah. Well, not all, but... <laughs> <laughs> 99%. No, uh, you wouldn't realize. You wouldn't realize anything. So this is really insider knowledge, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. <laughs> you should check it out. You should check it out next time and... Uh, get proof yeah that's it all right and i think there might also be quite a new uh boat that's run by renewable yes. energy yeah it's the called the ms diamonds diamonds ms diamonds uh, diamant in german which is running on lake lucerne mm-hmm. and uh, this is the first climate neutral re- regular service boat okay and um it's a hybrid boat. So they are not only hybrid cars and hybrid buses, they're also hybrid boats, okay. obviously. And uh, to top it off, it's a beautiful boat. It's really mm-hmm. beautiful. It's brand new. I, I think it was introduced like two two years ago, uh, just before the pandemic. And uh, it's a beautiful boat. And, um, and uh, so you can travel. You have a can have a nice boat trip on a warm, sunny summer day in Switzerland. Enjoy a nice glass of cool Swiss white on the upper mm-hmm. deck, knowing that the boat is traveling green. Yeah. <laughs> Call Beautiful. it like that. <laughs> the perfect day in paradise. Uh, more or less, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> there are quite a few examples of uh, environment friendly traveling here in Switzerland, and uh, um, I could go on for hours, but I think uh, it's enough for the moment. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for giving us uh, an update on what's happening for 2022 and, and also for letting us know how we can travel and look after the, the planet when we're visiting Switzerland. Yeah, it was a great pleasure. Thank you. We'll definitely have you back on the show in the not-too-distant future. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Caroline, and uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Isn't it fantastic that the Swiss travel system, one of the densest public transport networks in the world, is so serious about sustainability? I love that there are many different renewable energy sources being used, even wastewater. I'm sure you'll agree that travelling by train, bus and boat in Switzerland is a must. Not only is it fast and efficient with perfectly streamlined connections, it's also great for the planet. If you'd like more information from today's episode, including a link to the Swiss Railways website, you can find the show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 38. I'll also include a link to my detailed guides about traveling by train in Switzerland and the Swiss Travel Pass. And if you're ready to purchase a Swiss Travel Pass for your trip, there are links to purchase it in the show notes too. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this episode helpful and are ready to start planning your trip to Switzerland. If you have friends or family who are planning their own Swiss vacation, I'd be really grateful if you told them about the podcast too. Until next time, take care. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening. For more great resources on planning a trip to Switzerland, make sure you visit holidaystoswitzerland.com where you'll find trip planning tips, destination guides, information on transport, including Swiss rail passes, and much more. You're also encouraged to join the Switzerland Travel Planning Group on Facebook, 
where you can ask questions and chat to other past and future travellers to Switzerland. You'll find show notes from today's episode at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash podcast and be sure to subscribe to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast so you never miss an episode.